There's a question that I get asked a lot, and that is, what's better, Phalanx, Wedge, which one is better, when do I use it, how do I use it, and a lot of those questions definitely have a lot of validity to it, because in this game, there isn't just a best Phalanx, there isn't just a best Wedge, etc. It's all situationally, and if you know when and how to use them to your advantage in the moment, then you're going to be better off for it. So, But before that, a word from our sponsor. Now, Boost Gaming is a great new website for one convenient place to purchase your gift card needs for any game or console available for the U.S. and U.K. customers only. At Boost Gaming, you can purchase any gift cards for all of your favorite games. You name it and they'll have it. Check out the link in the description below to find out more about Boost Gaming and start purchasing your gift cards to your favorite games now. So the first thing that I really, really want to point out in these, uh, this phalanxes and the wedges is knowing how to tell what's going to be your front line. Now, with phalanx, it's very simple to tell what's your front line because obviously it's going to be the four... Uh, cavalry here, in uh, range here, infantry here. They're very easy to tell. That's your front line. With wedges, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit more difficult to tell because there's two troop types that are kind of neck and neck, right next to each other. But look at it this way, right? In a phalanx, this is your front line. Okay, the four squads in the front. When you go over to a wedge. This is your front line, okay? So a wedge, you essentially only have two squads that are your front line. Uh, for instance, infantry wedge, you only have two infantry squads as your front line. Same with range wedge, same with cavalry wedge. You only have two. Now, the interaction that happens once those two are taken out then becomes a little bit more uh, difficult to say. And that's why a lot of people don't really understand wedges too much. For instance, when you see here that you have two infantry squads in the front, instantly what you're probably thinking is, okay, once these two infantry squads get taken out, I'm going to move on to infantry and then ranged. But no, because remember, range will stay still and these cavalry squads are going to move up. So in fact, what's going to happen is once you take out these two infantry squads, you're going to move on to hitting infantry Calves. Yeah, so there's a lot of moving parts here, a lot of things that you need to keep in mind. But the main thing that I want to talk about today is when do you use a wedge offensively? Okay, offensively. Now, when you look at these wedges, you're a lot of people think that okay, well, if I use a cavalry wedge, I must use range. If I use range wedge, I must use infantry because a lot of people now are thinking, okay, the main troop type that I'm sending must be in the back. And while that holds true for the most part, wedges do have another use when you're attacking offensively. Take into account infantry wedge. Infantry wedge is a very popular one when you're attacking, first of all, with cavalry. But other, uh, other than that, it's also very popular with ranged. Now, you may be thinking, well, the range, they're going to be on the sides, two squads on each side. Why is that so? Well, glad that you asked because that's what we're going to go ahead and cover. And there's a reason why we're covering this. Because if you're going up against an infantry front line or if you're just not sure exactly what's going to be in the front and you don't want to be completely countered when you're sending ranged, if you go infantry wedge... What that is going to do is essentially, instead of having to go through all of the infantry, you're only really going to have to go through half of them. So, let's actually take a look at one of the uh, examples that I have here. Let's see, right here. So, this was infantry wedge versus infantry wedge. Now, let's take a look at the battle report. Now, if you see here, there was 330,000 luminary guards, T5 in infantry, but if you see... We actually got into the calves and started doing some real damage before all the infantry were dead. Now, if you want to know exactly how much 247,000 out of the 330,000 is, that's exactly three-fourths. Meaning that three of the squads were taken out 
and we never even went for the fourth squad before we even started going into the cavalry. This is this is what happens when you go in a wedge. Now, I'm going to go ahead and actually show the battle. That way you know exactly what I'm talking about. But let's take a quick look. Now, remember, it's infantry wedge versus infantry wedge, meaning that the infantry is going to be in the front for them, but the, the range is going to stay back and the cavalry are going to move up. So... The first thing that we're going to target is the first two infantry squads, only two. Now, right here, you only really see two health bars on their end because at the moment, I'm only attacking the two infantry squads because remember, infantry wedge, you have a two squad front line, that being infantry, okay? Now, that's what we're attacking right now. And keep in mind that now these cavalry, are moving on up so now while i'm really battling is infantry cavalry but i am still occupied attacking the infantry front line so let's take a look now if you saw the third health bar there pop up that's because my familiar procced on one of their largest squads and that being cavalry so that did do a decent amount of damage to their cavalry but that wasn't my actual troops just yet so as we continue that something's gonna pop up here that I want you to pay attention to. It says, Mermelon and Dark Hand squads are eliminated. Both of them pretty much at the same time. What does that mean? It means that the two infantry squads were eliminated. And now what my troops are going to do is they're going to retarget into the closest troops uh, available to them. So, and that, since the cavalry came up and the range stays back, now what my troops are going to do is we're going to attack some of the infantry that are still left over. But most importantly, the cavalry, which is where we're going to do the most damage. So we'll go ahead and keep this going. I get my uh, my familiars proccing. And now this is where you're going to start seeing the actual damage come into play. And you see one health bar, two health bars, three health bars. Why is that? Because now there's three squads that we're attacking. But the ones that we're really, really doing a lot of damage to are the cavalry and that's the main difference so in essence if you're going ranged if you're going cavalry if you're going infantry and you do not want to be completely countered the best way to go about it is go on a wedge that puts your main troop in the middle in the middle that way you only have to go through half of your counter now i have actually another uh another example here now this is also a range rally in infantry wedge, but this one was in a ranged phalanx. Now, why is that important? Well, let's take a look at the battle report. Take a look at this. Okay. In a ranged phalanx, I only had to go through half of their ranged. You see that? It's literally exactly half of their range before I started going into their cavalry. Now, you might be thinking, well, in a ranged formation, isn't there infantry in the middle so why did it go ranged and then cavalry let's go ahead and take a look and see exactly why that is okay so take a look at this it's going to be the same interaction pretty much at the beginning i'm going to be attacking their ranged and i'm only going to be attacking two of their squads for ranged now watch this watch this you're only going to see two health bars right there in the sides. Now, once those two health bars get taken down, watch them retarget to the closest troops that are next to them. Now, because cavalry outran the infantry, they're actually going to be targeted first. Now, of course, that familiar there is going to target their biggest squads. Um, but just take just take a look at this. Okay, once those their squads are taken down in the back. There's, there's so many familiars procking, but you'll get, you'll get the picture. Once you see those two health bars get taken down, you're going to see them retarget to whatever's closest to them. Uh, I wish the familiars would just stop procking so this wouldn't take 7,000 years. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so hopefully we can see it now. Okay, there it is. Both squads were eliminated pretty much at the same time because remember, you're only really targeting half of the, uh, the range squads. And now we move on to whatever's closest to us, which would be the two cavalry uh, squads because they got there first because infantry slower, cavalry out, outran past them, and that's where the manipulation of a wedge comes from. If you were to go in a, in a cavalry wedge, I believe is the one that puts the, uh, the range all the way in the back in a line, you would have to go through 
all of the range because essentially what what would happen in that interaction in a cavalry wedge is that this range squad will attack their range squad and then so forth and then essentially you're gonna have to take out all four squads before you move on to whatever's nearest to you whereas when you go in a wedge that only happens a half the time so in a wedge it's very very important to do that especially when you may be countered now does that always mean that it's the best option no take a look at this one okay this was in a ranged wedge and i went in an infantry phalanx and this was an infantry rally now why exactly did i do that well the reason for that is because infantry is one of those troops that you don't really want in the back all the time like if i was sending an infantry rally range wedge you might think is great the problem with that is that infantry moves so slowly that a lot of times you're taking damage away so when you go infantry phalanx instead of range wedge your infantry is going to get on their range much much faster to deal the damage much quicker um, so that's something to also keep in mind especially when it comes to infantry now uh, and then another thing to mention is that even though this was in a range wedge you will see here that I went through the the uh, the range and then I started hitting the infantry and the cavalry and you might be asking yourself well, why is that because when you take out the the range that's in front of you again they're going to retarget and target what's closest to them and that in that case would be infantry and cavalry not a specific one not just infantry not just cavalry so that's some that's a that's a weird interaction because they're all kind of clustered together uh so it's something to also keep in mind but with infantry just keep that in mind you want infantry to at least be either in the middle or in the front because if you put them all the way in the back man your damage is going to be mitigated so badly and this is also another reason why the cavalry like cavalry phalanx is really bad because not only is the range going to be destroying your cavalry i believe on that one the infantry is all the way in the back so can you imagine spending half the battle getting your infantry to get to their range like you've already probably lost so much cavalry that you don't want that it's one of the many reasons why cavalry phalanx is usually frowned upon for the for defending unless you know a hundred percent an infantry rally is coming at you uh but yeah just wanted to go over some of those points because i see a lot of people still don't really understand phalanxes and wedges and uh, a lot of their best uses etc now of course this isn't like all there is to it there is other nuances etc but if you just know the basics to start you're gonna be on your way if you have other questions for sure leave it in the comments and i'll try my best to answer it uh, but yeah appreciate you guys for watching and hopefully you learned something new today and until later bye